Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at a very interesting geometric problem, the problem on Twitter. And you can see the setup is shown in the animation from the uh, web page. So the setup is quite simple. Uh, you have a clock, all right? And then uh, it sh should start from uh, 12 o'clock in the, in the midnight. And for every moment you connect the tip of the hour hand and the data of the minute hand. And you can just do that repeated for every minute or every second, basically. And you will have many such segments. And we are looking at a very special pattern that you can observe in near the center of uh, this clock. And you can see you have uh, sort of like very dense area showing a very beautiful curve with many petals. So we are going to use some calculus tools to analyze the property of the of the petals. So here are the goals of study. So these are images generated within uh, Wolfram language and uh, the highlight the yellow part is the highlighted contour of the dense area that we are interested in. Okay, so these are my goals in the talk. The first one is we need to find the envelope in analytical geometry. Uh, the envelope is just the, the contour we are looking at. Okay, it's basically um, a very unique curve such that all the points on this yellow line is a tangent point between this segment, a sum of the segment to this curve. So this is a weak, what we call in envelope in analytical geometry or classical calculus. And once we find the envelope, uh, we are going to find the length and the area enclosed by the curve. Uh, the length, I mean the total length of the yellow line. And uh, the area enclosed by it is the area inside with the boundary as the yellow curve. Okay. So we need some calculus tools to handle that analytically. And this is the link to the Twitter. So I just put that. So I'm also going to put that in the description. So Feel free to click that and uh, enjoy the animation. All right, to make this calculation happen, you know, you can change many parameters in the diagram. But to be uh, more specific, I just uh, randomly give it a parameter that's the length of the hour, uh, the minute hand to the length of the hour hand is two to one. Uh, you can set it to uh, arbitrary uh, real numbers that's larger than one. So if, if it's, it's one, uh, you, you can see it will be a very trivial case. But for uh, anything like uh, one to less than one, uh, you basically can change the parameter so that it'll be like the reverse problem uh, of a such same setup. You just switch the uh, hour hand and uh, the minute hand and also change the parameter for their speed. You can have the same situation. So the only thing that probably be interested in is the ratio of the length. So in my case, I just set it a two to one. So uh, the minute, the minute, the length of the minute hand should be twice the length of the hour hand. So let's just uh, create all the lines and the, uh, the envelope just in one frame. Okay, so this is the graph that we have. It should be the same thing as this one and also closely related to that. Okay, let me just uh, quickly explain what I do here for, for this one. So in the clock, 
usually you start with the 12 and that's the minute that's the hour and uh, you sweeping the minute hand from in this way in this way this uh, clockwise okay but in an uh, analytical geometric uh, convention because I'm only interested in the length and area so the orientation of uh, uh, the th some of the parameters for the polar coordinate does not matter so make just to make uh, the calculation easier I switch this one into just standard polar coordination so you have uh, x uh, x and y and uh, just like minute hand sweeping this way it's counterclockwise and that's the angle let's see let's call it a, uh, let's call it a theta and then you have our hand okay it's moving sort of a same direction but at a slower rate the reason we do that is because every time we want to use trigonometries trigonometry like cosine and sine it must be defined in this convention okay. so if you are looking at how these contour are generated through the time you need to be more specific and use some uh, coordinated transformation way just to uh, make it like same orientation as the real real clock working but in my case because only length and area are concerned so it does not matter to choose whichever uh, direction or orientation you use just choose the simplest one uh, it would be just follow the polar coordinate convention uh, so the theta is defined from um, x between the vector and the x-axis and the direct orientation in CCW okay which is contrasted to the original orientation which is the theta should be defined between uh, the minute handle a minute hand and the 12 o'clock and you move clockwise so this is something you want to be careful to handle that so now we have the the diagram. So we use the this thing is generated with um, this convention. Okay. So for the minute hand, because we are looking only at a uh, half day, half day is uh, twelve hours. So um, we need to find the range between zero and the twenty four pi because moving one round is 2 pi so one day should be 48 pi so half day is 24 pi the reason I choose half day is because for 12 hours the hour hand rotate exactly one round 360 360 degrees and then do like 48 hours uh, just the repeat of the process uh, 40, 48 pi or 24 hours just a repeated process so uh, you only need to concern about uh, 12 hours and here we say uh, for the minute hand we have two times cosine theta and sine theta so that's the length is two and uh, that's the theta okay but for the hour hand uh, because once you have the minute hand go around um, for an hour so minute hand for one round and hour hand should only go like what uh, 12th one twelfth around so it's one hour one hour is uh, just uh, one over 12 of a circle so the speed here for the our hand is just a 1 over 12 times the theta here so this gives you uh, a setup a parametric setup for the, all the points that joining the 
a minute hand and uh, an hour hand. Okay. And then you just connect them. That's the segment we are looking for. So you sweep all the parameters from theta equal to 0 to 24 pi. And that's the diagram we have here. Okay. So I also choose a specific RGB colors to make it a, look like a navy blue in the background. So just uh, I feel it's very cozy and nice to have this uh, white and uh, the sort of uh, the, this color background. So it just looks very nice and highlights the contours very well. Okay. Also, uh, as I said, if you choose some other numbers for the minute hand uh, by fixing the hour hand to one, so you can have something like this. So this is the, how the contour and the lines look like if we change the length of the minute hand. It's quite nice. Okay. Now let's look at the how we com compute the envelope of the sweeping segments. So let's go back to uh, the math world. Uh, so this is how we compute the envelopes. I'm not going to very detailed about how this relation was derived, but this is just uh, the uh, the parameters and this parametric equation that we need to use to solve for this envelope. Okay, the next step is to fill in all the blankets or the variables with the proper values and expressions. Uh, because we have a parametric form, so we need to set up this guy first and then take the partial derivatives of this guy with respect to the values. So what's the f and g here? Oh, let's read it out. The paragraph is a curve that touches every member of the family tangentially. So the f and g are the, are the segments that we see here. That's the very vague lines here, okay? And the, uh, the envelope is, is the petals we are going to look for. So first, we need to find the correct way to describe all the lines, okay? So um, we, we have already know that um, for, each, for each point of the segment, it should be, for instance, one, this A and B, right? There is a, a segment a, a point on the segment. So this have a relative length called a t. A t is varying from uh, 0 to 1. Okay. And what's the coordinate of p? It can be written as b minus a times t plus plus a. So let's check. At t equal to 0, uh, we have a. At t equal to 1, we have b minus a plus a. Um, and this is, this is b. Okay. So this is the equation we have, a sort of a parametric equation we have for a point along a segment with uh, ending points at a and b for, for, two cor uh, for two coordinates. Okay, so this is the same thing here. Uh, recall that in our setup, this is the hour and this is a minute. And this point is a and this is b. We, we join the line here. And it's the t here, right? So uh, all the points along the segment 
can be expressed in this way. And A is uh, cosine theta over 12, sine theta over 12. And B is uh, 2 times cosine theta and sine theta. So if we have A and B here and use the same argument we had here, and this is the expression we have for F and G. And then we plug in this equation. So the partial derivative of F with respect to T times partial G partial C minus partial C, uh, partial F of partial C times partial G over partial T. So this is the uh, equation we are going to solve. So let's go back and using the partial derivative operators to solve for the right hand side of this equation. Okay, so this is what we have. And then we solve t in terms of theta. Okay. So this is expression we have. What, what does it mean? Let's just quickly plot the result. Okay, this is a one sort of one cycle here. Okay, let's see what does it mean. So this function means given angle at theta, which point on the segment will be the touching point of this segment and an envelope? Well, then you have theta, you can use this equation to solve for the t. For instance, if I have something like a pi, uh, pi here, because it's a, a pi is 3.14, it's somewhere here. So we will have around 0 0.04. So this is a tiny length, tiny length so here, maybe a very, very small section of the segment. So T somewhere here. T equal to 0 0.04. So which means it is very close to uh, the, the point A. So that's where it will be on the envelope. Okay, so this is the curve we have. And why I choose this one? Um, because this number times um, 11 over 12 is exactly 2 pi. So the compound expression will experience a entire exactly one one circle one cycle here in the expression so if you increase that for instance to uh, 25 pi you actually have something more than one one cycle so give it 24 over 11 would be exactly one cycle so this is the uh, behavior of the uh, function and if we look at this one, it, it, sometimes it goes to negative. This means at some angle, at a certain angles, for instance, let's see, which is a very close to, for example, it's like pi over three, it's kind of small number. Let's give it a small, very small angle. So it means sometimes like this, the tangent point is on this side, is outside of the segment. So T can be outside. Okay, so uh, the you can actually choose a T outside of this range. But if I specify uh, the T must be between A and B, T have to be zero and one. But in this case, the tangent point is actually outside of the, uh, of the segment. So it can be negative. Okay, so that's the parameter of the t looks like. And then we can just replace the t in this f and g 
to have uh, f and g determined only by theta. So this is the expression for f and g. And then we just plot it. So this is the curve that we observe as the envelope on this diagram. Okay. Now we have the expression for uh, this parametric expression for this curve. So we can actually find uh, the length and area enclosed by this curve uh, using analytic calculus ways. So this is a, a sort of online, free online textbook I, that I use to do such computation. It's got a calculus with the parametric curves. Uh, it's given by UC Davis. And we use some of the formulas described in this chapter to first find the area, uh, the, the length of the curve. So to find a the length of a curve, you're basically looking at its tangents. Okay, let's look at this tangent line. If we zoom out, zoom out, it, it's actually tiny, and you can approximate that with uh, dx and dy. And this is uh, <clears throat> d dx. And this is dy. And the length, the hypotenuse, is approximately my uh, uh, Pythagorean theory. So this is a uh, square root dx squared plus dy squared, okay? And because x and y are, var are dependent variable based on value of theta, therefore we can just uh, switch variable. equal to d theta. Okay, so this is the this is the expression we are going to use, which is also the same thing as this one. Same thing as uh, this, this expression here. Okay, so let's just go back to the code. And this is how I generate the contours, highlight contours over the diagram. Use the same same formula. And compute with the, the Pythagorean theorem. So this is a part of the segment. It's the slope. It's the paddle over there. And because this thing is a function of a cosine, and now we have seen that this function actually has a, a period of 20, uh, 20, 12, uh, 24 over 11 times pi. And we can see that to have 24 pi, so we need 11 copies of this guy. So the eventual the length is just 11 times uh, this one. and we can find a numerical value of that. Or we can just uh, do the computation directly using the numerical way. It's just uh, much faster than the symbolic method. It gives you 7.59, uh, okay, that's the value. And the third way to do that is we just sampling the points 
on the curve. Uh, it's discrete point. We just sample all the points and uh, compute the linear approximated distance along the curve. It's simply just like uh, uh, you, you make a curve that looks discrete. And you sample points. And you compute the, di the linear distance between these dots. <clears throat> the finer segment you have, the better approximation you will have. So this is the, what we do here is table all the envelope between these two segments and uh, make make two pi over five hundred as the uh, step length. So you you do that in times eleven. So this gives you the same result with some numeric errors. That's kind of expected. Okay, the next part is that we are looking for the area that enclosed by the parametric curve. Okay, let's go back. Okay, it's something like this. Also, it's mentioned in 10.5. Oh, yeah, in the in the polar coordinate. Yes. The, so these are two methods to compute the uh, uh, the area enclosed by a curve. So let's go back to the diagram, okay, here. So for this type of symmetry, uh, we need to be um, able to compute this type of problem with uh, polar coordinates because it looks like a like circle, you know, circular symmetric. So polar coordinates may be a better option for that. So we need to use a uh, sort of like uh, this way to parameterize a very small section of uh, of a, a infinitesimal area. So basically, we want to compute all the area within this bound, with uh, with this region, and then we just multiply eleven to get everything. Okay. So, but we need to be very careful when we switch to polar polar coordinates. Let's go back to our expression. So if we do that directly. Okay, we because we know function of theta. So this is r square because we need a half times d theta times r square. Okay, so that's uh, uh, that's the infinitesimal area we are looking for. So it's half times d theta times r square, and we do the computation here. And. Yeah, so this is the result we have. But you will see there's a bigger problem with this thing. Uh, recall that the circle that we generate, the length of the hand is two. So the largest area for the bounding circle is pi r square equal to four pi. So that's something around uh, between 12 and uh, 13, I think. Right, but you have a small section of the entire circle that's like 34. So this must be something wrong with our calculation, right? The issue here is the theta uh, is not correct. The theta, recall that this theta was defined by this value. Okay, the minute hand between the minute hand and the x-axis. But it's not the theta for the points, for the tangent points on, on, the, on the envelope. So we have just two angles. So this is a, a new angle that we actually need to look for. So uh, let me just plot this again. So the new angle we are looking at should be after we obtain the, the contour, it's the point on the contour 
joining the origin, and that's the that's a feed. That's a new angle. It should be like five. So five is usually is not equal to theta, because we have the f and g so far, right? We solve for f and g. Yeah, that's f and g. F and G. Okay, theta is uh, inside. But the actual angle that we need is defined by arctangent of y over x. So we need to basically find uh, a d phi that's as a x, uh, that's a function of theta times d theta. And the, the infinitesimal area we are looking for should be one half times r square or r theta square. It's a function of theta times d phi. And the d phi is <clears throat> turns to f theta times d theta. So this is the eventual transformation we need to do. And this in this is in terms of uh, this transformation is in terms of finding the Jacobian. The Jacobian. Okay. So you have to do such conversion before you can find the actual area under under this uh, under this curve and for this segments segments. So we can see this is not correct, and this is the essential step we need to we need to handle. And here I use a special syntax because arctangent um, for this one is limited to uh, two type of region. One is one three quadrant and two four quadrant because it does not distinguish the exact value of x, y, but only the y and the x to the ratio. But here we need to use arctan as um, a more generalized function that can handle uh, the points in the four quadrants. So this is a, a sort of a better way to handle that. And uh, I have uh, implicit d because I can write uh, the, the function phi as a function of a theta, as implicit function. Um, of course, you can all directly use that, but if sometimes you only have like tangent phi equal to um, uh, envelope the f, f o, uh, g over f, then implicitly will be more generic way to, to handle that. So let's just compute this result, and this is the expression we have. That's for uh, the f theta here. So we need to plug in the r square theta, uh, f theta, all together as an integrand before we can do integration for theta. And this is the integrand we have. And eventually we uh, integrate this value from the two preset bounds. That's this angle to this angle. So the small angle to the larger angle. Then if there was, uh, we'll find the proper region for this for this pedal. All right, so this is the result. And uh, let's just find uh, the numerical values for the whole thing. So this is uh, 11 times this result. Okay, um, so we have somewhere around three. The areas are very close to three, which is expected because uh, if you look at the, this area, it's sort of like half distance of the uh, overall region. So uh, it should be around things like one quarter of the value. And based on our calculation, the largest circle bounding all the, uh, you know, see the outer points are roughly uh, 12 uh, or thir between 12 and 13. So one quarter of that really makes sense. So this is the area that bounded exactly by this contour. 
And you can also do that just by uh, using the approximation. And it, you generate a polygon from uh, this origin point to a point on the curve and uh, discretize it and connect all the points and then comes back to the origin. So this will give you a polygon that's just approximate uh, the, the curved area. Let's do that times 11 to repeat it 11 times to cover the entire region. So this is the value we have, which is uh, exactly the same thing as our analytic result. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed the problem and uh, we'll see you next time.